a nice moment there between competitors, the youngster and the veteran. Uh, looking ahead to tomorrow night's action, two-time Paralympic gold medalist Brad Snyder will dive in. The retired Navy lieutenant grew up in St. Petersburg, Florida, the eldest of four children. And he made his first Paralympic appearance four years ago in London as a member of the U.S. swim team and found himself the focus of a remarkable comeback story. But with the opportunity to become a Paralympic hero came the challenge to redefine his life. I remember a beautiful sunrise and admiring the Afghanistan landscape, deciding to move north to where we thought there were other bad guys. I remember the blast that went up first in the air thinking it was my friend Adam. I was running to the front when I stepped on another bomb. I remember the feel of being in the explosion, laying down on the ground in the fetal position and looking down and seeing both of my hands and both of my feet. And I didn't see any blood or damage or anything. And I really thought that meant that I had died. I had reconciled my own death for a moment. I'm passing on and I'm proud of the life that I've lived and ready for whatever happens next. meter freestyle featuring American Lieutenant Brad Snyder. Today is the first anniversary of the worst day of his life. Exactly one year ago, while serving in Afghanistan, he stepped on an IED and exploded in his face, taking his sight. A remarkable story. One year, and he's back on the blocks in London. Take your mouth. the first guy off the blocks. Keep in mind that in lane three is in Hamid in Hamid, and he is the defending Paralympic champion in this event. After a week of being in and out of surgery, that's when I realized that the, the surgeons were telling me that I'm blind. They're not going to be able to fix my eyes. But the good news is they're going to be able to fix everything else. It is all about Lieutenant Brad Snyder. It took him eight weeks to leave the hospital, and here he is in London, closing in on a gold medal. The crowd comes to its feet. Snyder is all the way back. So snaps inform like, what space am I dealing with? So this is a small, a low roof, right? I can hear that with the snaps. Um, what I did in London was miraculous. It wasn't until after that I really had to go through the nuts and bolts of adapting my life. Coming around, I feel the wall right here. I was also at the same time really learning to accept who I am as a blind person. What does that mean? And how do I now turn that lens to the horizon and say, what am I going to be capable of? Who am I going to be? When I do all the things that I do in the adaptive world, everything's a struggle. From toothpaste on a toothbrush to finding food on my plate. Drinks right here. Water is to your right. Perfect. Thank you, Dan. I'm literally banging my head against the wall just to exist as a blind person sometimes. Take the bars. Yeah. Hopping in and swimming laps for the first time, I felt comfortable, independent, and not only was I not struggling, I was doing something well. Oh, good stuff, Brad. It was good. I think the magic of it is that I don't feel different. It's a black line on the bottom. It's two lane lines on either side. It's a wall every 50 meters. I have very vivid images in my mind of what swimming is. And so when I'm doing it, I don't feel blind. Four years after London, Brad Snyder's focus is now targeted toward winning more Paralympic medals, but also at achieving a fierce level of independence in his own blindness. Come on, push, push, push. For him, that means the work doesn't end when he leaves the pool or the gym. Welcome to Casa de Snyder. I want to find ways to do everything that I used to be able to do. So I spent about five days down here building the squat rack. I had to mess it all up to realize there were different lengths of screws. And I built it two or three times, getting almost all the way to the end to realize that the only screw I had left was too short. The drive for constant self-improvement is nothing new. An energetic kid who sometimes got himself into trouble, it was Snyder's father who had the idea to put him into swimming at age 11. He soon became captivated by his ability to set new goals and go about achieving them, which paired well with his desire to one day serve in the military. 
I remember growing up, looking up at the wall of pictures of my grandfather in his naval uniform and just knowing that that's where I want to go. I ended up getting early acceptance to the Naval Academy and didn't really even look at anywhere else. By his senior year in 2006, Snyder was captain of the Navy swim team and had earned the right to begin training with one of the Navy's most elite units after graduation, Explosive Ordnance Disposal, essentially the bomb squad. We've got two got central locations, one up here, one back there, and the van itself. I need a shot care. on all three. In June 2011, Snyder was serving in Afghanistan during his second tour abroad. He was now a lieutenant five years into his career. The Navy had taught him how to handle almost any situation, but he was not prepared for the news he received one night when he was awakened by a superior officer. My lieutenant said, I don't know how to tell you this, but your dad died. And I thought, what? That didn't make any sense to me because I'm in Afghanistan and I'm facing death every day and I've got, I've got the metal detector and there's the hundreds of IEDs in the ground and I'm the one supposed to be facing death and my dad died? I didn't know what to do. Then I kind of assessed my own feelings and thought, I'm needed here. Every time I go on a mission and I see children playing soccer in fields that have bombs buried underneath them, I think, you know, I'm obviously having some sort of tangible positive effect on the world and I need to be here. I imagined this conversation with my dad and said, you know, what, what do I do? And I called my mom and I said, I'm not coming home. On September 7th, just four months after making the decision to stay in Afghanistan, Snyder would come home. The day he stepped on the IED that took his sight, he was remarkably able to walk away from the blast. He was immediately airlifted to a hospital in Kandahar, where he would undergo the first of over 100 hours of surgery. He awoke days later in Washington, D.C. at Walter Reed Medical Center. When I was laying in the hospital in Walter Reed and people are saying, oh my gosh, this is so tragic, the reality is you're still alive. You have a family that loves you. you know, most of your body works just fine. You're going to be OK. It's a huge blow to be as capable as I used to be, literally taking apart bombs, than to now I don't know where the bathroom is. Where am I going to garner my sense of self-respect? But the very first step forward in that regard was to swim. And that's the power of adaptive sports. So I've written four or five full songs. One day I'll attribute lyrics to them, but the, the lyrics are a little bit more intimidating to me. With practice and the tools of accessibility, Snyder is better at blindness every day. But his seemingly unshakable spirit is still tested by moments of darkness. One of the worst things is the fact that I dream. When I dream, I see. I see all the things I miss. I see the beach. I see the sky. I see people's faces. Every day I wake up, I have to re-realize, be reminded of the fact that I'm blind. Called my mom and said, Mom, I'm having a real bad day. I dream, and I dream, and I see all these great things, and I wake up, and I'm blind again, and I just think, it's just so hard to have to do that every day. She said, Brad, you're looking at it all wrong. She said, instead of dreading the morning where you lose your vision every day, you have to look forward to the end of every day where you get your vision back for a while. Perspective is an incredibly powerful thing, and I think we all see the world that we want to see. There's good and bad in every situation. If you make a deliberate choice to look for the good in every situation, look for the good in every person, that's what you're going to see. Brad Snyder competes tomorrow in the S11 100 meter backstroke, the first of the five events that he is expected to race in Rio. Back to Jason Knapp and Justin Zoe right after this.